I grew up watching you. I grew up in New Jersey, and uh, you grew up in Queens, right? Yes. And I grew up in New Jersey wanting to be a movie star, and you brought the movie stars to me. You began broadcasting uh, on ABC, correct? On KABC, the mm -hmm. local KABC station here in Los Angeles. Were you, as an interviewer, ever manipulated by, to, uh, ever asked to manipulate your interviews at all, or were you given pretty free reign, or were you asked to say you like something and you didn't? I mean, I, I suspect not. That's not even a fair question. But well, it's a, it's a fair question because today, the business is really controlled by the public relations company that handles the particular star or artist that you're interviewing. And they have so much strength today that they could stop the interview and say, I'm sorry, we can't continue with this. You cannot ask that kind of a question. But at that time, there was no one really on television doing what I was doing on a daily basis. So I had free reign. Rona. Been wonderful. Good evening. I'm Rona Barrett. Love, love working with you and meeting you. Thank you, Betty Day. Could you survive in this era? I wouldn't want to. You why? I wouldn't want to. I don't. I don't. Is it dirty. I just don't want some PR man to come up and say, "No, you can't ask," you know, um, Mel Gibson that question. You really? Why not? Do that to you? Well, somebody might. I would imagine they might. They certainly wouldn't want me to ask him. You know, how did you develop the kind of hatred you did, allegedly, for people of the Jewish faith? I mean, I'd come right out and I would want to know. I really would like to know. People trusted me with very sensitive information. And there were many stories when I decided I would never really talk about because I thought that they could severely injure children of these people. And, um, and unless it happened outside, where 50 other people might have seen it or five other people might have seen it. It was not my place what somebody was sexually doing in their home and their right, own privacy. Right. And you say the word Joan Crawford now. Uh, anybody who even has an idea who she is, they always go, Mommy dearest, she, 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 she beat her daughter. Well, I think Faye Dunaway <laughs> got into the real body of, uh, of Joan Crawford. And she made her out to be one of the most despicable mothers, certainly. And for some reason, that was the image in the end that people walked away with about Joan Is Crawford. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that accurate, Rona Barrett? Was that an accurate image at all from the Joan? You met Joan. Probably. Oh, yes, most definitely. But um, you have to understand, Joan would always be nice to somebody like myself or Luella or Hedda or any other important person in the press because that was her business and she knew she had to be. She was charming to me. She was wonderful to me. She was always wondering or worrying if, you know, if I was sitting in the right chair, if I had the right clothes on. I mean, that was Joan Crawford. But I, I, know, I know her daughter yeah. and I know Christina had a very different kind of life than the one that I was introduced to. You interviewed Ro uh, Oprah. Was that in the show as well? Very first interview that Oprah ever did for national television. What was that? Do you remember yes. being impressed or? Well, I was impressed with her performance in The Color Purple. Oh, right, And no one really knew that this girl in October was going to go on television out of Chicago. I just knew her as the Oprah Winfrey who was on um, in a movie asking, so what was your early childhood like to Oprah? And um, didn't realize it at the moment, but she was, you know, she, she said a lot of things. Uh, I didn't realize how much more could have been gotten right, of course. at the yeah. time. Who would know? And who would know uh, that anyone would care? At, right? at the time, I, don't, I wasn't sure, except that I thought she was so extraordinary in the performance that I would love to know what this person was all about. You had a media empire as well. You were a very, very prominent force on television, on ABC as well. You had magazines, basically gossip Hollywood. Hollywood fan mag magazines, because Hollywood fan magazines, in when we started my magazines, they were still almost the, the king and queen of, of where you found your news about Hollywood people. Right. 
and I wanted to start the first magazine called Rona Barrett's People. And uh, my partners said, no, that'll be the next one. And one year later, they People. came out with People <laughs> Magazine. And, and, that that. and that was sort of it. Rona Barrett happy? Rona Barrett's very happy. Rona Barrett's still working, though, isn't she? Rona Barrett will probably die working. But Rona Barrett's followed a different, well, okay, I love that you're doing this new show. I can see that this, you know, boom, you got it. Too. You're still Rona Barrett. <laughs> so Rona Barrett's working, but Rona Barrett's working for something else. And tell me, tell me about, uh, it's for senior care. What happened? I suddenly was surrounded by a lot of older people who had needs, no, needs great needs. And suddenly I said to myself, you know, we have all these children's charities, and we have all of this. I said, but there's nobody to talk right. about the seniors. There's nobody to help them. Who, what is the first program that gets cut from any government program? The elderly and babies. And I said, you know, somebody's got to stop this because we're getting to be older generation anyway. Now, I when I walk into a nursing facility here in Los Angeles, I walk out oftentimes both elated and depressed simultaneously, but depressed because I see people sitting around in hallways and they're dribbling, they're in their wheelchairs, and no one's talking to them right, and right. no one's caring for them. Well, what do you see in the senior care centers? What, what, what do you? What well, do there you are some like in the big cities. What are you do? Yeah. Well, my my hope and my dream is really to be able to build the right kind of a new village for these people to live in. And my desire is to get as many older people who need the help and bring them out of the larger cities and put them in the smaller towns where there's a greater ability to get caregivers and from nurses a from a community and a community that cares about whether you are living or dying mm -hmm. a good life or a better life. The show, what's the name of your show? The show is um, Nothing But The Truth, Rona Barrett's Hollywood, Nothing But The Truth. Nothing But The Truth. Why did it take you so long to do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was always looking for a really good reason to do it, and it really dawned on me most people have a very difficult time with concepts, mm -hmm. but they understand bricks and mortar. Oh, uh, okay. And right. so I decided that what I was going to do was to Build. establish one of these kinds of facilities. A facility for the elderly, for senior care. For senior care. And that's the bricks and mortar. And this is why I'm doing this show for this building. If, if, for this, and because if, it, if what I believe can work, and the programs that we'll have within this facility work, it can be duplicated all over the country in other communities. Thank you, Rona. Okay. Thank you, Tom.